Welcome to Certain Point of View, your first step into a much nerdier world. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on iTunes. Just go to certainpov.com. Thanks. And now your hosts, Ben Milton and Addie Thomas. Hey, Nerf Herders, I'm Addie Thomas. And I am Ben Milton. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Certain Point of View. Today, we are talking about the Game of Thrones Season 7 premiere and our expectations for the season. Ben is uh, really vain right now and wants to watch our live stream I'm while so we're recording. Vain. Um, before, while, while Ben is watching himself and touching himself. Uh, you act like that's any different than any other episode. No, it isn't, but I've just finally put it out there. While uh, he's doing that. The great thing that, is that we have video documentary right, right now. <laughs> Do- documentary? Documentary. Yeah. Documentation, documentary. <laughs> you say potato, I say... Tomato. You know, something else. Yeah. <laughs> English is hard. It's my second language. And while, while Ben's figuring out English, you can check out the website. Uh, you can check out all of our social media, all of the, uh, the uh, what is it, our weight loss, civil war, Patreon. <laughs> all of that is on our website. You're having trouble com. too. Yeah, exactly. It is definitely a conflict. Uh, How much weight are you down? I'm down 30 pounds. Right 30. Now. Okay, good. I got somebody on Team Ben today. Yeah. He's down 24. Oh, you're just trying to find people who already lost weight. Yes, I am. Down. I am. I. You know what? All right. That's <clears throat> Wow. All right. So we're close. We're... Wait, so when did they, did they lose weight from the point that they joined? Because, mm-hmm. well, wait, so you just this is added my boss. Them. Did they nah. just cut off their leg? Nope. He's been working out. He's been eating right. Uh-huh. He's been uh, eating his vitamins and saying his prayers like a good Hulkamaniac. Okay. And uh, slowly, just healthily losing weight. He just happened to go to the doctor today, and they weighed him, and they were like, hey, you're down 20 pounds. No, no, no. You have to lose weight from your point of registration, He's, not... Oh, like, I didn't realize we had a form that you had to sign Well, up. that's that was how we... That's how we've... Co- well, where's the form? Is the, is the form on the, on the website? <laughs> all, right, all right, Ben. Okay. Anyway, you can, you can catch up with Weight Loss Civil War on our website, certainpov.com. Case, thank you for joining us. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> hey, I've buddy. got a question actually now about uh, about our uh, weight loss civil war. Sure. Uh-huh. Uh, it, could we sign someone up who has previously had a baby and been like, look how much weight they've already lost? Based on Ben's logic, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. this seems to work. In fact, we should just find uh, various people who've just given birth. Maybe yeah. we should just hang out <laughs> in maternity wards. <laughs> Uh, Don't put it past me, guys. I know, I know. You guys are joking about this? I'm seriously considering it. (laughs) Which is great for a contest that doesn't even have a prize. (laughs) (laughs) Bragging rights is a prize, Addy. I I mean, I was feeling pretty good because, like, like work got a little crazy towards the end of, like, the the spring period. But I've been been back in the gym, and I'm down five pounds and, like, feeling good. Good Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Uh, well, you want me to tell you how much I've lost? No, 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 no we're, we're good. We're, we're, we're good. Uh, okay. But now that I'm going to be signing up, like, all of my friends who have had babies in the last, like, three months, uh, of which there are many, because last year was a wedding season, too, guys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm screwed. Well, yep. we didn't have a crazy wedding that was, like, a landmark moment to kick off this season, but we did have it at the previous location of the Red Wedding. Yeah. And... By far, it seems like almost unilaterally, it is the standout moment for the Game of Thrones season seven premiere, and it was Arya's big, uh, big moment. I was really happy when they cut to Walder Frey. I was like, oh, I know it's right? <laughs> immediately. I was it's Arya. Yeah, you had to know immediately. Yeah. yeah, because this isn't lost. We don't do flashbacks generally. <laughs> generally, like, yeah. and if they do, it's like within the scene. It's right. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like yeah. Right. flashback. Like, you know, yeah, as a yeah. Raven. Whereas my wife, enough time has passed, and she's not nearly as obsessed about the show as I am. Like she was just like. Okay, and then like she was like totally caught off guard when everybody started dropping like flies. Spoilers alerts starts dropping like flies, and and Arya rips off the mask, and I was just like, ah. You see, I was confused that people were surprised by that because, yeah. all right, so Carter and I watched it when it premiered. Uh, like we mm-hmm. didn't like watch it after the fact like we normally do and like they did the like the previously on Game of Thrones and they ended the damn flashback with, with Walter Frey her getting killed Frey. Right, right exactly and then when she pulled off the mask after everyone was dead she's like oh it's Arya and I'm like Yes. No shit. Yes. <laughs> I thought we were together in the room on this mm. scene here. Like, mm. I didn't realize that we were watching a different scene together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, 
Jenny Jenny was like Carter. She was she was totally taken in by it, and I I, I was on it right away. I was like, oh, that's yeah. Arya, and she was like, what? Because even the even the sort of subtlety in her performance was like you knew it wasn't Walder Frey and his normal sort of angry crotchety old man. Being like, a he was dick. Little, he was nicer than nice. he was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even as even being a dick, right. he was a nice dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's Arya's way. Yeah. yeah. Or is it Arya's way? Who yeah. knows? Who knows? <laughs> Who can tell? Maybe it's the wave. Well, so what, what were you guys outside it's of... Jack and Nagar. <laughs> right. Oh, that'd be the best. I miss him. So what was outside of that moment? Since that's almost like we could kind of say, conclude that's sort of... Well, let's talk about the episode in general. Because I, I like this episode across the board. Like, there's nothing that I felt was... Uh, Aside from the fact that it's like the first episode of the season, we're going to like... you Set know, up ca- everyone. Yeah, we're going to catch up where everyone is. The only person we're not... Or only pardon me, the only like major power we're not going to check in with is the Iron Bank of Bravos that everyone seems to have forgotten exists. Um, aside from that, everything, you know, we just touch base with everyone. Good scenes for all of them. I was pretty happy across the board. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was fun. It, it, it did what it needed to do. It came out with a big bang, got everybody talking and, and to give them something to talk about in the episode. And then it's kind of slowed down and just kind of just started to like just I, and remember, here's where everybody is. Let's take them one step forward. Nothing major happened. <laughs> Not just remember, here's where everyone is. Let's have a giant map that Cersei's walking across being like, this is where this person is. Yes. This is where this person <laughs> yeah. is. Just in case you're not clear, here's the geography. I'm going to walk across yeah. a giant throne room with it. Well, you know what? It, it is helpful, though. Like, considering how oh, yeah. scattered well, everyone and, and is. who actually understands the map? Like, you, like the, it's a big yeah. continent. Like, it's, it's this big blown-up space that a lot of it doesn't quite make sense if you don't know it or or if you don't pay attention to the the, uh, intro every show well even then like the way time works you may not realize that like coming from the iron islands which are like way to the north east yeah to get to essos means you have to go around the entire continent and it's like a actually a really big trip uh like people might be like oh well they just like sailed down yeah. Like, no, it's like going all the way around South America to get to Africa. (laughs) It's a bit of a hike. Yeah. Yeah. You lose a little bit of the scale on the show with you know, that you get in the books. Um, my, my second favorite scene after the Arya scene though, was when we, uh, learn what's going on with Clegane and the hound, the hound. I, I thought that scene was easily like, for me, it was right up there with the aria scene for for the rest of the rest of it i didn't know whatever that was that scene was amazing that hit me hard because he's very similar or he's become very similar now to a character i play in a DD game uh like he is now very similar to like my redeemed paladin character and i'm like oh my god is he like he's with a cleric he's with like a, a warrior who has a flaming sword and like now he's starting to see visions and have like holy powers Holy fuck, holy fuck, <laughs> holy fuck. <laughs> like he's my half orc berserker turned into a paladin. <laughs> uh, you know, for me, I, you know, there were, there were a lot of moments I honestly enjoyed. I like that it stayed small with it. So it feels like, you know, Brunt might have some big moments here and there as time goes on with uh, with this particular season. Well, but, after him missing for that season, it's nice to have him back. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, we, had, some, we had some really cool moments with him right at the end of last season. Mm-hmm. Um, I, lo- I also like that, the, I mean, I'm glad that they included it in the previously on scenes, but connected that, that's st- the, the moment with him and the, what was it, the farmer and her and his daughter that were dead. Mm-hmm. I thought that yeah. was a cool, a cool thing, a cool callback and a, and a way to kind of, like, kind of re-examine who he is, both, you know, spiritually and, and Where ethically. he's come, yeah. Yeah, because it, it really does help, uh, help catch us up all on his journey. And despite the very awkward Ed Sheeran cameo that stood yeah. out so, so badly It depends to me. on who you're talking to. No, that's true. If you don't know who he is... But yeah. like I very barely know he who he is. I don't, I can't name I a single name a song, song. Yeah, I couldn't either. But I still knew who he was. Yeah, and it stuck out way too badly for me. Like I thought the scene worked fine. The yes. fact that he was like a a guest person to be a singer. Like he showed up and like oh he's got he's kind of a smug face. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then like Carter's like it's Ed Sheeran. And I'm like who the fuck's Ed Sheeran? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Just went it's Jim Broadbent. Like and I'm like okay I know who Jim Broadbent yeah. is. Well, like, I mean, Jim Broadbent's an actor. Like yeah. And they had a singer, so they had a singer. Yeah, I know. Like, I know. Everyone's like oh I fucking hate Ed Sheeran. I'm like. I don't know why you care. <laughs> well, well it, the it, problem, breaks, it broke the it fantasy. Broke the, it, it broke, yeah. yeah. The fact that I was like, oh, it's Ed Sheeran. Yeah. What the fuck is he doing on this yeah. show? Yeah, but every time they've had a major actor show up that's like a little off character, um, like uh, the Septon from the previous season. Um, blanking on the actor. I know name. who the actor But you see, I, I can forgive that because they, like, I've seen them as an actor. It's not like I, you know, like. Yeah. 
Ed Cause... Sheeran has no business being on the show. That's that's, that's like, the oh, difference. Whatever. <laughs> <It's no business. laughs> Seriously, whatever. <laughs> I mean, what? Yeah, it's not like oh, this show's just absolutely shit. No, but it, 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 they've had other it took me they've out had of the other moment. appearances. Like, um, was it Mastodon was one before? Um, like, I'm trying to think of like p- like people have like brought up like other performers like yeah, other singers have. have been on yeah. and yeah, it's and like I don't okay, like cool. it then I equally had no idea who they were yeah. like and I equally don't care now like yeah. it, it, he yeah. looked like a Lannister sure okay he was a Lannister man sure what if like, like Taylor Swift suddenly sh- showed up I've seen that happen in other things and it was fine for the yeah. scenes it, it depends on the context I think yeah, like it does. Like, if Taylor Swift showed up looking like Taylor Swift does, yeah. like, that would look weird because no one in Westeros looks like Taylor Swift. Yeah, I guess but if she showed... looks like he stepped out of Westeros. Or... Yeah, like, he's hob- he is hobbitish. Yeah, yeah exactly. like he Like, he was playing a Lannister man, so he had, like, the characteristic Lannister, like, hair. So, he, sure, he could be, like, a second cousin or, like, some, like, way down the family tree or just from that area, just, like, the, the way the Northerners have a Northerner look to them. Um, he wasn't, like made up particularly well like his hair was shaggy and like that's not... how he always looks exactly though. and and then he was wearing normal clothes like it looked fine like if if taylor swift showed up zero makeup which would never happen um <laughs> in like the normal like king's landing attire i probably would be fine with it like it's, you know if she showed up fully made up in like a whorehouse also it would never happen like <laughs> also would fit in that particular scene too like that came off meaner than I meant. <laughs> no, you said it. It's, I thought, it's, it's, it's record, already out man. there. That's our promo right there. Record. I was just looking for like a scenario where she could be like just as made up in, in the context of Game of Thrones. And yeah. there's not a lot of there scenes. A, yeah. Even the royalty doesn't look as made up or, or rather as dolled up, like as, yeah. like so much makeup and so forth. So really, that's the only place where you could see it. Like, right. I will say, though, I got past it pretty quick I did because I did like that scene. I yeah, did. they they didn't linger on it like they could have. Yeah, yeah, it was which quick. is fine. It was fine, and it was nice to see Arya kind of interacting with like common people and seeing how they see the world from right. Even right. Though, like the, even though technically these are her enemies, like these are soldiers in the, the that employee. she would have killed. Yeah, otherwise. but yeah. they're being nice and she's fine and like they didn't rape her. They were just nice to her. Like they didn't right. like there was no aggression either way. It was like okay, this is, it's fine. I was very happy that it was like a quiet scene and said like. A scene that like oh that went dark that like, ends in yeah. violence yeah because that easily could have yes yeah, and, and I think that's like what everybody yeah everybody yeah, yeah when yeah. she's looking at the swords yeah and she's just lining them up like how many of these guys do I have to kill first right. and then and, and maybe and then that would have nice. made the Ed Sheeran thing worse like if that if all of a sudden it ended violently it would have been even more egregious that like this like outside actor was there yeah but because it wasn't it's fine it was a cameo that they didn't really call too much attention to they sang a song that is like a reference a to the book yeah, yeah that like, is a very important yeah so. like it's so it's nice to actually get that in there and sure have a recognized singer do the that do that song fine whatever yeah. uh what are, were there any other big standout moments for you guys I mean, there were a lot of fun things throughout. Like, you know, I like the stuff with John and Sansa. Yeah. I, I like catching up with them. I like seeing more more stuff with Dormant Giants Bane and yes. uh, uh, Leanna <laughs> yeah. Mormont. Um, that was I nice. liked yeah. that uh, Sansa was wearing hair very similar to season Cersei. one Cersei. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, I was... and was calling back to how she's learned stuff from Cersei. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. So that, that was fun. That was a big. I, I've, I've noticed a lot of people have also kind of observed that, like, her hair was. And very she's similar. really taking yeah. cues. Well, and her hair Sarsa. tends to reflect like who she's sort of like calling upon in mm-hmm. terms yeah. of her experiences, yeah. like be it her mom or be it Cersei or you know whatever. But like, so this was nice. I, that that was a good detail. Do you? Think she's, she's so tall. Yeah. She's so tall. <laughs> she was towering <laughs> over John, and I was like, I love it. I, I love it right now. <laughs> but it, and I but I think that's uh, that's just great showing that that relationship is, is starting to fall apart. Um, let's see before before we move on to sort Do of you think it will? for the well before I, we move on to predictions for the rest of the season. Let's finish up about like what we liked about this episode. Yeah. And what no, we that was it. Well, I liked her episode. interaction with with Littlefinger, and she brushed him off pretty well. Like yeah. he's definitely trying to sew shit. Like we we can see that very clearly. Right. Yeah. But she's so far doing a pretty good job of dealing with it. Like I don't I don't know if it's automatically going to be a failure. Yeah. Uh, how about we do a round of the Stark children, like just to who's left, and then we move on to other people. So uh, Bran getting to the wall. Yep. Uh, finally. It was, it was, no, yeah, it was a, a big, a big it deal. It was a big moment, yeah. but yeah, and, and it the got the was, was, yeah. The scene yeah. itself was fairly yeah. underwhelming. Yeah, but, but the, him what being the at the wall was a great deal. Like, yeah. We got to see like all the, the what's going on with the Night's Watch people, and they're looking okay, but yeah. we understand that like they're fucked. 
Kind of, yeah. Well, but very so they're about to get reinforcements from the wildlings. Yes, but uh, it, it, very closely related, though. We also saw that, what was it, two or three ice, um, uh, ice giants? Ice giants, yeah. Ice giants, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, That's scary. Yeah, yeah they look I, good. That broke my heart. Can I just be honest? Yeah. Like, seeing the giant white walker, I was just like, oh. Well, we know it's I'm not so one of them now. bummed. I'm so bummed about that. It's it's bummed to see them, but we don't know these particular giants. That one went down at the Battle of... Uh, yeah, so why would he be a thousand miles north of there? Um, he was with... Uh, yeah, but he in was... In Winterfell is where one one died. No, no, no. You were talking no. about the one, one of the ones that fell at Hardhome. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. we didn't really get to know any of those particularly. Like, one one was the main giant. That's true, yeah. yeah. I guess. Like, we also saw a lot of wildlings die. Like... Sure, there's plenty of people. Yeah, who have but I, they oh, only um, seem like three or four giants, so each one of them matters to me. <laughs> Giant lives matter. Speaking of, uh, at, at, at Hardhome, there was that chick from Vikings who was like kind of stood out that she was there, even though she's from a show that's very Vikings. similar. <laughs> yeah. like, like, so, yeah, actors, by the way. Make actors, I don't mind showing up on different shows. Yeah. That's not a big deal. It was fan servicey to have Ed Sheeran there. He was only there because What's Her Name wanted him on the it's show. I just don't think yeah. we need to be haters at this point because the show is still a good episode. Oh, yeah, no, like, I don't think anybody's We're, saying that the yeah, episode no, was right. bad, but it, it, it I, I think it does break the fans. Look, let's That's get to, let's get to the point. So, Bran coming into contact with the Night's Watch means that we are starting to get the people connected again. Like yeah. we we yeah, already started that in the back. previous season when we got Sansa and Jon together. Like now, Bran is not too far and is in easy communication with with the rest of them. Right. Like we are start. We're going to see this, and guess what? Bran knows who Jon Snow really is. Right. So I think it's important that we cut from Bran to John and not the other way around, because this is further reminder of when Bran gets to John, the dynamic is going to shift again. Dramatically, yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think of, uh, so obviously we had a big moment also for Daenerys. She arrives at Dragonstone. What did you think of that scene? A drug. Honestly, I, I, it was long. Like, I was like, oh, they got five minutes to fill. Let's walk up the stairs. Yeah. Like, I, I was having fun with it. The, yeah, it was all right. We got, it was the first time I really felt like we got a good look of the entirety of Dragonstone. Like, it's been around since yeah. the second season. But I feel like we kept seeing the same throne room and, like, the same beach. But that was it. Right. Um, well, so, we saw like, from when, a very confined space with Stannis. Yeah. It was always, when, yeah. When it cut to the, like, the doors open and you could see it, uh, Carter mentioned that she thought it looked very um, oriental. And I was like, oh, actually, I mean, I don't really know why you'd think it looks automatically that way, but it does make sense. And then I saw, like, there was a Burger King ad on Facebook that I looked at right at that moment that popped up of Dragonstone. It looks so, like, it's so foreign and not, like, Western. And I'm like, it's really weird that you know that I'm there at that moment <laughs> right now. Get out of my head! But you're right. It makes sense because the, the castle was built... But that so castle true. was built by the Targaryens before they ever actually came to Westeros. Right. So it has no actual connection to any of like the Western culture that we've seen. And in fact, it looks like a culture that we have only seen like the remnants of their swords and stuff like that. Right. So it's nice that we actually got to see that it does have some like design differences from the other castles. So that's cool. Uh, having her come in and getting to see the dragons landing and like all of this, that's all really cool. And a reminder just how big their fleet is because we just saw a different fleet and that was Euron Greyjoy showing yeah. up. Uh, Did you guys like that scene with Euron? I didn't hate it. Uh, some people said that he was a little too Captain Jack Sparrow, but I think, but uh, yeah, I mean, he mm. is a yeah. I could see that. I, yeah, I w I felt mixed on it, I, but I was more concerned about the plot of that scene. That's more than necessarily did I like Euron or not because I don't, and you're not meant to. I didn't feel he was played. Poorly. No, I Did thought he was played really he, well. He had a baller line as one of his last ones, where it's like, "Here I am with a thousand ships in two good hands." Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I thought that was. He has some sick burns. Yeah. Yeah, right, but I, I like because I, I like that scene. I I was thankful that like I was worried that we're like, oh god, like she's gonna marry this idiot right away. Yeah, well, but, I didn't. I didn't. Cersei, like, I liked that. Played it close. We, I liked that. That was kind of throw that throws for a, a bit of a loop that she didn't. Automatically, yeah. she echoed what Jamie warned her in private, which is yeah. different than what John was doing with Sansa. Like, right? Like the, those two know how to, how to work their relationship. Apparently, uh, yeah. Apparently, <laughs> like they know, like we can bicker in private, but the everyone else has to see us as a, a united, united front, exactly. right? Uh, right. And that was nice to see that difference, especially because it came after seeing the scene with with John and Sansa bickering in front of their servants, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, or rather, their the bannerman, their bannerman. Yeah. yeah. Well, then let's also move <laughs> on to. Uh, you know, at the the Citadel, you also have you now have Sam. Oh yeah, and the 
I kept well, you mentioned it earlier. <laughs> the, mo- the montage was like his version of Anna Kendrick's cups, except it was called bedpan. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy to see that. I thought Jim Broadbent showing up as the Archmaster was actually really good. The yeah, beard looked good on him. He he worked a lot better than I thought because he's kind of a goofy actor. Yeah. Um, like he he's like a goofy intellectual, and this made him seem more serious. Like it, yeah. he fit in this world. Um, that was that was really cool. I, you know, the whole. Figuring out that all there's all this dragon glass underneath Dragonstone, being like Stannis mentioned this to me, but I didn't think about it. I'm like fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys know you're looking for dragon glass. Yeah, like, I, but it does make sense that that's where you would find a lot. It also makes sense that that is why uh, Shireen Baratheon survived the dragon scale so long because she was breathing and eating like there was just dragon glass in the Everywhere, air around yeah. her. Yeah. Like okay, so we've got a cure for for dragon scale. And guess who's there with a lot of dragon Jorah scale? Jorah Mormont. Yeah. Which I thought, I realized, so Sam knew Jorah Mormont. So there's actually, a, like, if there's anyone who's there who's going to listen to Jorah, it's going to be, be Sam. Sam. Yeah. yeah. It's not just like, oh, they happen to be main characters. Like, he actually served his father. Yeah. Right. right. There's a relationship there, so it makes sense that, that they'll be able to work together and, and find a, a think, solution for think, Jorah. Do you think they will, or did you think it was just I, a I don't think they would passing. introduce him that way without yeah. having There's some connection. There's a reason connection. he's there, yeah. yeah. He's also, if, if you think about this one, so even though he's a northerner, he's been part of the southern arc of the show, or like the, the Essos arc of the show, and so now we're finally taking like characters who are vastly far apart. Like Tyrion meeting Jorah and like coming over. Tyrion was part, like King's Landing theoretically is like the, the, the mid-ground. The mid-ground, the connecting pieces, because they have spies everywhere, so they're hearing about things. But like Jorah didn't even know that his father had died. Uh, until Tyrion told him, and Tyrion only knew that because he has people talking to him from the it's north. And stuff, so, yeah. so it was nice to have, uh, or it's it's a nice time where we're finally getting some of these like really disparate people coming together. Just like having the Greyjoys showing up, we're starting to see these all various come pieces coming into finally the coming front. together. Yeah. Because this whole all the all the seasons leading up to now have been it, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, and you know yeah. it, it all kind of together. We're finally seeing it's the map. All like this, it is together. important that they were painting out the map. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, George R. R. Martin has said that like people don't really understand their geography if they don't have access to cartographers like we do in the modern time. Right. Like you wouldn't know what the world looks like, and that's why maps are always so fucked up and they're so like rife for like uh, details being wrong. Like this is good. We're we're finally getting the the world is starting to come into focus in a way that it hasn't before in the show. Right. Well, let's kind of move on now into the prediction stage. So let's let's and not just predictions out of directly out of this episode, but let's also talk For about the, like, the rest of the season as well. So uh, more immediately, you know, we we started talking about Sansa just a little while ago, mm-hmm. uh, and. You know her similarities to Cersei. What do you? Th- where do you think she's headed? Do you think she's headed down a darker road? I think that Bran showing up changed how I thought that that relationship was going to work, because if Bran shows up and tells them this information, and I feel like he'll tell it to them in private, it's going to change how Sansa sees her rela- or John's position, like her supporting John because. Even, like he is truly her father's son, like and and it has proven that to her. Um, now she'll see that he's he's not that he's actually a theoretically a usurper. Like, uh, you know, her aunt wasn't really heir to Winterfell. It's, like it's hard to really say in that like with that kind of hierarchy because it, it was the older sister, right? Like, mm-hmm. so, so so you think it actually strengthens sort of her path along with Littlefinger to maybe potentially, yeah. or at least it makes it a more interesting path because yeah. maybe she sees herself now as being heir to Winterfell, and he really belongs in King's some, Landing. Well, either in King's Landing or or to the world, as it were. Like you know, <laughs> like his big threat is is the White Walkers. Like his big threat is a, an army coming from the north. Um, and maybe like his role isn't to to rule this land, but to like die on the battlefield. And maybe she sees that more clearly there. Um, and so maybe she takes a position kind of like the Maesters are saying, where uh, someone has to remember things. Someone has to be the memory for the world. Someone has to be the like the thing that makes us human, and not just dogs fighting for survival. Um, and I know that's a lot of weight to put on this this one character. I think but that I, th- I think that's more our areas position in that that dynamic i think Arya is i have seen nothing that will that will indicate to me that she's not going to just be the aggressive uh 
wolfling going out there. Yeah. Uh, particularly like, because the uh, next time had a shot of a dire wolf that was not ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Which means that it was, means Nymeria, that it yeah, was Nymeria. 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 Yeah. Which makes me think that she's going to link up with her her dire wolf and be the queen of the wolves. Because <laughs> we haven't seen that yet, but we've heard rumors. <laughs> I, I think I think uh, I think Sansa ends up uh, marrying Littlefinger. I think that there's enough political pressure and there's enough political advantage that that with um, uh, what do you call it the the fleet uh, the the Ironborn uh, yeah the Greyjoys teaming up with the Lannisters is going to put enough pressure on the Starks that she's going to need to have an. Uh, an answer to that as well. I don't think so in that I don't think their pressure is really going to come from the South. Uh, at least well, not at first. Because no, we, we, but they have nowhere to back we up We immediately to. acknowledged that uh, the Lannisters are going to go after the Tyrells. Like, that makes the most sense. Um, and it sh- and the fact that Jamie is the one who's voicing that and you actually think that that makes sense. Sure. Like, there's no good way to attack Winterfell in winter. Right. Uh, and everyone has kind of acknowledged, like, it's kind of a losing game to go north. Like, it makes more sense to defend yourself from the crazy lady with dragons and also a fleet rather than coming the other way. Uh, even the Greyjoys, I don't think, are going to go for Winterfell or anything like that. In no. Times of well, no, but Especially they have based on previous have, But, but as, if, as the, the walkers are going to breach the wall, right? I mean, yeah. like, we all know well, that's going to happen. And everything mm-hmm. for right. <laughs> so, so Winterfell is going to have to back up somewhere. Where are they going to go? The twins, <laughs> right? Yeah, which, no, it's which true. Leads it's, to the, the question is how much are they going to? Def- uh, yeah, the veil, I guess, would be mm-hmm. that one. Uh, the the question is how much are they going to prepare to evacuate, or are they going to try to just make a stand? Uh, and I realize that they've talked about okay, what are the castles that they have to prepare? But like, how far are they going to retreat south? And at that point, is really their concern the political ramifications of a, a crazy queen? Well, uh, if she's going to kill them as they come south. Yeah, I mean, I guess the question is, how much are they aware of... Do you think there's a chance that Cersei has, like, there's there, there's a forced alliance against the White Walkers at some point? Or do you think Cersei is just that far down the road that there isn't a chance of it? I think they can make that alliance with Jaime. Yeah. And I think Jaime... I mean, there, there's the talk about that Jaime's ultimately going to be the one to kill Cersei. Cersei. Yeah, right. like that's, Which, that's pretty... Let's address yeah. that. Do you think, I, but, I think we all kind of... I, 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 I buy into that. that. I would not yeah. be surprised if the end of this season is the death of Cersei at Jaime's hand. Yeah. yeah. Uh, What's the, the, going the, the into one the next season being... Yes. <laughs> at his golden hand. Uh, <laughs> Just bludgeons <laughs> her to death. <laughs> uh, going into next season with the White Walkers finally coming into full view of like... like Pushing uh, south. Like, yeah, probably penultimate episode of the season uh, being like the White Walker's Siege of the Wall. And then the last episode of the season. Is them getting through it. it. Was, well, is they have pierced it. And also Cersei is going to do something that's self-destructive. And Jaime Stops kills her. her in that process. Right. And it might not be like I have to kill her the same way he killed uh, Aegon Targaryen. It might be a, more of an accident. But either way, he's going to be the one to do it. Um, and I could see that being her arc. Like when finally everything is in full view. And like I said, the world is becoming a very clear thing to us now. Like the fact that there's a little girl with dragons out there is now very real to them. And those dragons are very big and there are thousands of ships right off their shores. And there is an army of zombies coming from the North. Right. Finally, they are seeing all the real threats and not just this game that they were playing of Thrones. Uh, and if she is still caught up in that, and he sees this larger world, that's the moment where he's going to have to make a move to actually confront the real enemies. And those real enemies are still going to be out there at the, for the next season. Hmm. Well, let, let's stick with Cersei for a little bit, too. Um, you know, Euron Greyjoy uh, promised a gift mm-hmm. for her. I think it's Tyrion. Uh, I've heard a lot of people throw that out there. I'm, like, I think the only logical people for, for that gift like that w- <laughs> are Tyrion and Danny. Like I don't know who Danny's else. Danny's too big. So big. Well, yeah, yeah. yes, big. it's true. Danny's too big, but like, <laughs> but I could Can't be see. Gendry guys, I mean, who <laughs> else would have access that... to him in a boat? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. I think it's either Tyrion, Varys, or uh, uh, Tyrell, the old woman. I don't Tyrell. think it's going to be Elena. I don't think so either. But I, I buy into your Varys theory. Um, Varys seems to make the most sense that it's it's a big player on the map, but it's not so. But big how much does that... he know about Varys? 
Here's Who my doesn't thought. know about Varys? So we have seen shots. Uh, I mean, we have to speculate also based on what we've seen. Right. Uh, so the season trailers have shown shots that look very much like we're finally going to see Casterly Rock. Yeah. And it's going to be Tyrion, who knows everything about every single, like, privy and, like, right. uh, plumbing system there, leading troops in there. And he, we think he's going to take it. So it would make sense because Casterly Rock is something you can access by sea uh, that they did the, the Greyjoys then counter it. So you think that Danny has taken it and then he comes and he either is, goes after Tyrion Flanks him. or he actually catches Tyrion. So do you think then if he catches Tyrion, do you think, like, I mean, she's not going to let Tyrion live <laughs> very long. If that No, he, she's not going to let him live but the yeah. uh, most likely scenario <laughs> this could actually be where dragons <laughs> oh no actually this could be how Tyrion come like gives jamie the come to jesus moment at the end of the season where uh, he has to choose between cersei and Tyrion. and like Tyrion's like so you think i have we're seen not the see things that gift. are out so you don't think we're going to see this gift until the end of the oh season. i don't think it's going to be very fast because here's the thing no. you have you also have to remember big. that euron Greyjoy is supposed to be the archetypal ironborn um and to that end, the Ironborn do not sow. And that means that he's not going to just go and take a thing that is like a hard fight. He's going to position himself to take something after it's a easy. fight has occurred. Yeah. Yeah. So after like a big siege of Casterly Rock, I think that makes a lot of sense for him to swoop in Snag and him. surprise him. Like I think he's going to l- like lurk somewhere off like off the shores and then come in at the last moment to, to lay siege to something. Um and I think, given the given the way that Game of Thrones allows for sea travel, that could really just be anywhere. It right. doesn't <laughs> but I mean, like, because also, like, he can't go after Dorne. Dorne is uh, is notoriously difficult to lay siege to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't think. I mean, high or what is a high garden? I, I don't think that's easily access or accessible by sea either. Like, it's. I mean, I I could be wrong. There could be a sea passage to it, I, but. It just seems like also a poor choice because it's has the most troops and the it is best prepared for a siege. Right. So unless he wants to go north, Castle, waiting for Castle Rock to be attacked because he's smart enough to realize that Tyrion would go for ta- for Castle Rock makes the most sense. Yeah, he could grab he could grab either one of those. I, I like the idea of you know because like we're all prepared for um, Jamie to kill. Seriously, like there's been a lot of speculation, especially leading into this season. But if he if he does capture Tyrion and brings him to uh, King's Landing, it gives Tyrion the opportunity to be the first person we all thought was going to kill Cersei based on the, on the rumor. So it could be either brother or it could be both brothers killing her. Yeah, which would be yeah, <laughs> combo <laughs> could be a fastball special. <laughs> they finally deal with the thing in the book where like Tyrion's able to do like flips and tumbles. Yes, <laughs> it would be the best. It could be the best. I think. I mean, considering this season's a short, se- it's what seven episodes. Seven episodes. Yeah. Yeah. So, in so next if, season you, six. if we plot this out, and we and as I said, like I think they're still going to go with like this penultimate ultimate, you know, sort of like pacing that they do um so if you if you think about it we've got we just we just did the first one so we've got six episodes to go through so if the sixth episode is ultimately when Cer- when cersei dies and everything kind of falls apart with the defense of the north mm-hmm. um the episode prior is the actual taking of the wall by the whites mm-hmm. um then that makes sense for the episode before that to be Tyrion being captured and mm-hmm. the episode before that for Tyrion to go for castle rock mm-hmm. Um, Which or maybe Jesus. two episodes of of Tyrion being captured and then travel like brought to King's Landing, right? Um, so I think in terms of the pacing of the show and how they tend to deal with these subplots, that makes sense on a timeline scenario, right? Yeah, as far uh, as filming it, yeah, and releasing it, yeah, that makes sense to me. Because yeah. uh, I think next next episode is well, going to be them moving to Castle Rock. They're not going to get there first. Cause, what about uh, Sam? Like at what point does he leave, and and or 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 what happens? Like does he stay there through the whole thing and just become? I don't think so. I, I think we've got two episodes before he makes a big move. That makes sense to me. Yeah, just enough exposition to kind of gather so that he can gather up enough information to be useful. Yeah, because you got to remember we spent a lot of time with Sam in this episode, and the way they usually pace out the the episodes is the first episode 
hit like establishes all the players and we spend some time like some time with the big characters or the right, characters right. have a, like big importance to the arc and, that story, and then yeah. the second episode is where we catch up with characters who might also be equally important but we didn't spend as much time with so either characters we didn't see at all or or characters who we only spent right a few i minutes expect with. to see a little more of jora and yeah we spent more more of jora more more of the hound frankly right um uh, because we know that we also know based on what shots we've seen that the hound uh uh Beric Dondarrion uh Thoros and Mir and like their whole group are going to be north of the wall fighting against the whites right coming. right because uh, we got that badass shot with like the flaming the sword, sword yep. like and it's those three together yeah. yeah which is curious I guess also we should talk about the other things that people have speculated on that we see footage of and it makes us wonder like the timeline because we also see Clegane down south again at one shot and they think that's him in like the the dragon hold of King's Landing uh, where they think that we're finally going to get Clegane Bowl uh, <laughs> right. and I don't know if that's actually going to happen this season but yeah, I think you save that for next season I think that I heard something about them finally getting all of the principal cast together in one scene Ooh. Uh, which is fascinating, but I don't know. I, I didn't so even you, read that directly. Think, I've only heard this in other people talking about if, it. Speculation. If that is true, what do you think that is? Do you think the White Walkers make it all the way to like King's, King's Landing? Landing? It, I would hope so. I don't think the White. I mean, we've this season, building, the White Walkers are not well, making yeah, it. Let's, let's, no, let's, let's, let's be very season. clear let's about say that. This is the, next the, the more let's likely say, scenario is that the White Walkers uh, make it into the North. So that could be. This actually could be the scenario where we get. Either in the in the la- second to last or third to last episode, frankly, the big stuff of the wall, and then we they actually have to pull back and they send envoys south to try to gather people. And it could be John is actually down south when the whites attack, not realizing that they're that close. I think. Look, we've been building up to the. I mean, we've been teasing the White Walkers for six seasons. If you have them just just invade the north and that's it, that's as far as they get. That is a huge letdown. They have to push and seriously threaten all of Westeros in a major way, not okay. just not just the North. Like all the other all the other families are going to go. Well, it's the North. Oh well. Yeah. You know exactly with how they kind of fuck the Starks. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Which is the theme has been the theme the most of the since show. season one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think I think they have to they have to push like seriously deep south and and make it a a. Maybe not necessarily this season. No, no, but, but yeah. going into the last season, that if they're not ser- seriously threatening, that forces all the families to come together and have some sort of united front against them with with John and Danny, then uh, you know it, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't really. You know what add we up. haven't seen that might be interesting. Uh, we haven't seen a siege proper with the with the White Walkers, uh, like a, a zombie style one, where like like Winterfell, you would imagine, might be a spot where you hold up while the white walkers are at your gates and like potentially it could be they get someone out to go like try to bring reinforcements so that could be the thing that finally pushes them to like send the main character south uh as to to rally additional forces and then they come north and meanwhile we see like maybe like sansa hold up in uh winterfell or maybe john's hold up in winterfell and sansa is the one sent south i don't think they'll keep them together um and some other like minor characters like so that we we have the threat of the North surviving. Like they have to hold out from the white walkers who are at their gates, like trying to break in while we are, we then bring in the Southern forces and the whites have actually moved past that point. They're just, they're just so all encompassing that these like holdouts are inside a sea that is like continuing to spread South. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Which, I mean, it's, it's certainly possible. But I, I don't, don't think that that's going to be this season. No, like, if, no. We're I, talking but about that very well could be the, ne- last the entire yeah. next season. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah, I think I think that you have, you know, I mean, I was, I, we've already said it, but the wall comes down. They start to invade. They take down all those castles that they just, set, you know, set up of like as defenses along the way. And the walkers mm-hmm. just start walking, like walking through yeah. those castles one by so one. So I will one. amend it and I will say it could also be the wall falls episode three and then it's their defense of the north and then next season is them piercing south everybody coming together to to fight yeah that would also make sense from a how they structure things yep because Mm -hmm. they could do and they could do the siege of castle iraq cut against the wall fight Mm -hmm. uh, because we've already seen a big wall fight so we know what they're not going to do a full episode i I don't think unless that's supposed to be the the big climax of the wall yeah um so if they do that 
cut between each other where we get we see like the team we're rooting for doing really well and the team that we're also rooting for not doing not very doing well. well yeah um and so you get this like little victory and this big defeat and then that's when Greyjoy swoops in and and makes and, it like, bad yeah and reverses the tide on that one but that's also when like uh Tormund's giant Spain and like a bunch of them get away from uh uh Uncle Gain. And those well, are uh, what too. is it? It's um, Eastwatch, mm-hmm. by the sea. Yeah. Uh, so that's when they get away from it and pull back, yeah. right. and we get to see like the Umbers and the Karstarks like make their stand right. and prove themselves in, in, uh, just a little bit before they get killed off. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you willing. know that's happening. Yeah. Which you know, back I know we were talking predictions now. Uh, what do you guys think? I guess now this is our like our MBA class part of it. What did you think of the decision, John's decision? Oh, oh, to to keep yeah. them? Sort of a management question now. I liked it. I, I thought it was the right choice. I don't think they should for have those fought guys. in public. Right. But, but, but that's but what, Sansa's what you, fault, but, not But, but who did John's you side fault. with in that? Like, do you think Sansa was right, or I, do you think John was right? 100% see both approaches on this one. Right. Um, I think that in this time and place and the circumstances that they are about to be up against... It makes more sense to not shift around the players too much. Like switching out what family is housing or is housed inside those castles is not a great one. And also it's not really a victory because you just said that this this is the spot that's going to be attacked next yeah. if the wall falls. So it's a longer term stratagem, sure. If you if you had the time, uh probably if you were playing the Game of Thrones, then yes, you switch out the people who are there. And you and you deal with that, and you figure out at those things because you're shoring up your allies because you're trying to play this long game that has stakes that are personal and also family ones. But when you're playing the survival of the human race, it does not make sense no. to punish all these people and and weaken because we we just right. saw that like Winterfell was not as well defended. I mean, ultimately, it didn't really matter because it was a giant who pierced the walls. But like, yeah. but Winter, still. like theoretically, a Stark knows how to get into Winterfell better than someone who's not a Stark. Right. Like, a Bolton was not going to hold it as well as a Stark would have. No, and they didn't intend to. And John, that's what John said. Like, John said, you know, like this, this, it, like he's seen the ar- the army that's coming yeah. south. He it's knows. Yeah, I, I completely, one hundred percent agree with John in this scenario. Sansa was way out of line by trying to. To, to 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 challenge him at that point, right. she should have voiced her concerns at another time. Right. But uh, this isn't the time to play the game at this. Point. Right, and she's trying to play the game because she's mo- like we've already said she's modeling herself after Cersei, who is not great. Like Cersei has done surprisingly good things as in in her later years, uh, <laughs> but like she traditionally is very bad at playing the Game of Thrones. She just thinks she's good, and she's always been successful because her dad's rich. Right. Well, so then now this is sort of a well. I guess there are two things that are kind of like big predict. Like what are big? Uh, some big predictions. Like who are going to be the three dragon riders? Who, who like who? You mean Tyrion and John? <laughs> Danny? Right. I mean, is there is there debate? No, I just I like I was wondering what, what <laughs> I, you guys are throwing out there. I, I think right. the run to the litter is going to go to Tyrion, and I yeah. think that it's so the only scenario where John's not a dragon rider. Um, is, is if he's it, dead is if the if the uh, frost dragon is inside the wall and when they pierce it it comes it breaks free <laughs> right Ugh. and I have heard that story too <laughs> yeah I, I don't see how it could be anybody, anybody else. else can you imagine how much of a mind fuck that'll be if a, if an ice dragon shows up like we've been building so up like amazing. look at all, all the dragons it's gonna be so cool and, and then, then ice giant dragon. ice dragon oh shit yeah. I, yeah. I, I feel like they've got to yeah uh, for people who are actually l- watching this and have no idea what I'm talking about, so there's a George R. R. Martin story. It's a short story about an ice dragon in a world very similar to Westeros. Uh, it's a little more sci-fi-ish, but uh, there's a lot of thought that like his books are much more tied together than we even think. what we presented as because he's he's had stories about like worlds of like long winters that were very clearly part of his sci-fi series, but also could very much be Westeros. Um, so people wonder if this ice dragon, which they make references to in the Game of Thrones, like as an old child, like a fairy tale, uh, people think that maybe an ice dragon is like inside the wall or like somewhere like that. Uh, and that's why like there's always like winter around there, like there's summer snows in that area. Um, so it's it's interesting to to speculate on that. I don't we don't have like real reason in the context of the show, but it's still yeah. a thing that people talk about and speculate about. I don't think it's going to happen. 
I don't think so. It's, it's, it's dubious. Yeah. It's, it's a big thing yeah. to introduce. And I, I, like, I won't be disappointed if it doesn't, but yeah. I'd love if it does. I mean, they could also yeah. just as easily reveal that the reason why Winterfell has like these hot springs is because there's like a uranium core of a rocket ship inside of it, and it would fit inside the larger context of George R. R. Martin books. Lore, yeah. But I know a lot of people would be really mad if they find <laughs> out that it's actually been sci-fi the whole time and not fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Brand the Builder is a Martian. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, another another big point like who do you think ultimately sits on the iron throne who's your who's your pick i mean the easy go is that to have john and danny hook up yeah but that seems too easy right yeah that's the thing it's like so the speculation is that john well like john we've confirmed is a targaryen yep uh there's speculation that Tyrion is also one and that we end up with those three as like sort of recreating the the rise of the Targaryens, right. which is actually not that long before this show starts. It's only yeah, a couple right. centuries before. Uh, it's a very eventful century or a couple centuries, but it was only a couple centuries. It's not the thousands and thousands of years but from the, the last houses, or yeah. from the Long Night. Yeah, uh, I think the Iron Throne won't exist at the end of the series. I tend to agree. I think yeah. I think that. Uh, Do you think they kind of split her into the seven kingdoms of their own? Like the, in a I, sense, I think we'll see was, a really big shuffle. Yeah, because there was like I felt like the moment where in what was it in the previous episode in the, the was it season finale of last year or I think it was actually the Battle of the Bastards when Danny talks to uh, um, the Greyjoys about giving them the Iron Islands. You know, there's a little bit of a debate about like, are we just going to give everybody back their kingdoms? Do you think that is a possibility for sort of Danny's new vision of this world since she is sort of kind of breaking the wheel is her, you know, is sort of her, mo- you know, her motto at this point? Maybe. I, th- I think there's a possibility that she'll see through Cersei and her obsession with ruling the throne that she will see the folly of that and recognize that everybody needs like there there needs to be the balance of everything, um, and kind and and do away with the Iron Throne and kind of squash that idea of the competition for the throne, um, and just kind of let everybody be and have their their place to defend Westeros from from you know whatever may may be coming right. in the future. I think I think that's a strong possibility. I don't see her ruling. All of Westeros. It well, doesn't I, make sense. Like the the Targaryens didn't win it all in one fell swoop. Like it wasn't just like they showed up and all of a sudden they ruled the Iron or the, the Seven Kingdoms because they happened to have dragons. Like it took a long time. There's a reason why the Dorns are still princes and and princesses and and uh, and not seen as like just the wardens of their territory. Um, these areas all fought and they all resisted and they all had like had their own rules against it. Like the reason why they kept the seven kingdoms the way they did was just to keep the structure. There were good things the Targaryens brought, and uh, the Baratheon rebellion uh, didn't want to do away with that completely. Uh, but clearly, this is a crumbling system. Like it, it required a lot of things in place that they weren't capable of. And Danny, I don't think, is capable of putting those back. Like the Targaryens brought stuff from Valyria, like like government practices and and knowledge and 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 you know people who can Bureaucracy, support them. Yeah. yeah exactly that they were familiar with that they then forged together really well we're not gonna we're not in that circumstance like that was a very peaceful time relatively speaking like we are in a very different world where the, the you know the dead is are rising and coming for yeah, the living but, like, but, one, but once once the white walkers are defeated do you right? honestly think the dragons are going to be alive after the white walkers are defeated uh, I can see like one dragon still being alive which means that effectively only one dragon is still alive. I think so. I can see. I can see a situation where the where the dragons live. Yeah. Do you guys remember? I and I. I actually don't remember this one. Um, the the positioning of the Age of Heroes versus the Long Night. In well, the in the lore, and I I just don't remember off the top. I of my thought head. the Age of Heroes was before the Long Night. That could make sense. I I legitimately don't. I, know. I, I I'm trying like it's been like a year since since i read them but yeah i'm, I'm like 90 percent sure that the age of heroes was before the long night yeah because like the the question i have is there's a lot of stuff in the age of heroes that's like really big fantasy stuff like mm-hmm. the the brand the builder stuff the the storm kings and like the reason why um like that's such like a amazing fortress and whatnot like the um 
all, all those like crazy things well, that are going on. Oh wait, but yeah. wait, but Brand the Builder, Brand built the, the Builder wall. built the wall, so it had to be so it had to be long after night. the long night. Yeah, yeah, yeah to stop yeah. the walkers. So. Yeah, mm, that's that's weird to think about then. So this is an era where like we're starting to see magic and all this crazy stuff come back. We're also seeing the the true threats to mankind rise again. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be another era where after after this is all said and done, all this magic that had returned to the world has been shut out and it's just going to be, you know, the remnants of humanity, like telling tales and not even having the written word. Like, I wonder what happens to Old yeah. Town. Right. You know, like the the maesters are supposed to be the memory of the of the people if if they're destroyed then what happens it's some weird stuff that happens like people yeah. won't be able to talk about that this era for very long because there's not that many people who can write and it's going to get really weird i i think i, I think old town survives I, I think that this all gets documented and and we we are ushered into a new age of heroes uh just differently you know, I, magic is clearly on the rise again. You have a lot of really interesting things happening with religion and, and new gods like coming forward and old gods kind of fading back. Um, so I, I think like I think like that's still a little unclear in the mythos of, of Westeros as to like what exactly is going on there. And I hope that they I hope they really delve into that and, and we kind of get an explanation about more of like what's going on with the old gods and the new gods and, and how is that playing out and how is that game manifesting itself in in what we see in Westeros with the people and the magic coming back and stuff like that. Because um, that's fascinating to me. Like the old gods and the new gods, especially the new gods, you know, the idea of like this fire god who's super violent but clearly like trying to defend Westeros against the walkers at the same time. Like it, it's it, it's... I really want to learn more about that. That's yeah. one thing that I hope we get a lot more of. At least we get an episode of kind of explaining any of this moving forward as, as we as we wrap up the show. That's that's yeah. my hope. So I, I feel like we've covered a lot right now. I feel like I could go for a drink. You guys want to go to the Game of Thrones bar? Yes. <laughs> okay, let's go to the Game of Thrones bar, yes. guys. Uh, <laughs> well, while we do that, let us know what you guys think about, uh, like, what do you think we have in store? What do you think about the premiere? Uh, you know, obviously, we, well, this episode's coming out the Thursday after the premiere. You know, excited for episode two. But again, you know, we still want to know what you guys think is going to happen with the rest of the series. Just go to our website, certainpov.com. You can find all our social media there. And until next week, stay scruffy, my nerf herders. Thanks for listening to Certain Point of View. Don't miss an episode. Just subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on iTunes. Head over to certainpov.com.